thank you very much for joining me today in this live webinar um, on understanding the causes and natural treatments for inflammatory colon conditions. So uh, let's first, uh, based on the Ayurvedic perspective and of course the use of Ayurvedic herbs, we'll talk about some Western herbs, but mostly I found the great greatest success in treating this range of inflammatory colon conditions using Ayurvedic herbs and of course Ayurvedic diagnosis diagnostic methods because there's many types of IBS as per Ayurveda. There's not just one type. So if you contact me and say, I have IBS, you treated my neighbor, and can you just send me the herbs? Well, you may get entirely different herbs based on your type, either it's Vata type, Pitta type, Kapha type, or a combination. And there's different degrees and progressions of this inflammatory colon state. Um, so even if you find the herbs a little advanced and you don't know them or you're not going to be able to find them or make these quite advanced formulas we're going to talk about today. Um, the diet is still very, very important um, and critical in this condition. And actually the area most people go wrong and why they don't recover is due to the diet. Unfortunately, most people haven't been able to recover by just changing the diet. Even my former patients who recovered with the diet and the herbs, you know, sometimes had reoccurrences years later. And even though they went back to the correct diet, they still had trouble to, you know, uh, recover without contacting me and getting the herbs. So the herbs are very important, uh, particularly when we are talking advanced case of ulceration where there's bleeding involved. So, um, so let's talk about like the three main stages of inflammatory colon conditions first. The first stage is just, you know, uh, um, inflammation in the colon, not diverticulitis per se, but inflamed mucosa tissue. Um, so, and what does this result in? It results in loose stools and diarrhea and, and kind of a hypersensitive um, colon state where it's easily aggravated. Uh, and of course, this type of inflammation in the colon can also be in the whole body uh, the person could have muscle pain, the, the gums, which are uh, uh, mamsadatsu, the muscle tissue as well, they can also be inflamed. So the same type of person could have like gum disease and inflammatory gum problems, muscle tenderness, inflammation. They may even have, you know, in a prostate, you know, sometimes I've had men where they had inflammatory colon plus an inflamed prostate or sometimes an inflamed bladder as well. So there's this excess urination and urinating at night um, and these loose stools. So, you know, inflammation tends to not be just isolated in one part of the body. We can have a weak point in our body. Our colon could be the weak point, but off usually the whole body is inflamed to some degree. There's usually some systemic inflammation and it's uh, quite evident. Uh, when you start diagnosing the people and you find out that they have other types of pain as well. So the first type is just first level, we could say is just loose stools, particularly if you've had, say, mild constipation or constipation your whole life. And now you're getting diarrhea or loose, you know, diarrhea, alternating diarrhea, constipation, alternating diarrhea. This is a sign of the uh, early stages of this type of inflamed colon condition where you're getting alternating back and forth from constipated to diarrhea. Another sign that you have inflammation in the colon, besides you probably have some muscle pain, some gum pain, you know, uh, even mouth sores. Um, these would be other muscle tenderness. Um, these would be other indications you have this inflammation in the colon. But the main one is diarrhea, loose stools, particularly if you have, say, hot foods, spicy foods, and you instantly get like diarrhea and loose stools. And you got to eat like white rice for a few days to recover. That's your colon is now, you know, inflamed. So once it progresses a little further, we could say, uh, then you could have uh, IBS, you know, irritable bowel syndrome, or when it's quite serious, irritable bowel disease. But uh, we'll just focus on the word IBS. And then there we have different types. We're going to talk about that again. There's different types of the condition as per 
Ayurveda. There's not just one type of IBS. Uh, and that's based on the causes and the symptoms to determine the type. We're going to cover that. And then the and, and this is usually once it's up to an IBS level, there's more uh, constant diarrhea, loose stools, and you, you're getting less constipation. And, you know, maybe you're up to seven or eight, um, you know, loose bowel movements a day and the system becomes very hypersensitive and the person starts to lose weight um, because they can't eat a lot of food. So they don't know what to eat. And then you know, they start to lose weight, they're getting weaker, they're getting dehydrated from all the water uh, being expelled because, you know, what they say, you know, constipation is a slow killer, slowly creates toxins and creates ama and inflammation and pain later in life, mostly in your joints and your muscle. But uh, diarrhea, loose stools or inflammation in the colon is uh, kind of quicker. Uh, it's really depleting you quite fast. You're losing the, the, the passage is quite fast and uh, you're not able to get the nutrients out of your own food. You're not able, your colon isn't uh, uh, getting the water back out. It's so, so all this loose stool dehydrates you. So it's a very, you can deteriorate quite quick on IBS. And then if it's not resolved in a timely manner, then, you know, you could have ulceration, ulcerative colitis, where there's now bleeding coming out. And this is even more painful. So now you have these loose stools, seven or eight, 10 a day, you're losing weight. Uh, you have pain maybe all the time now with everything you eat practically and, uh, and bleeding. So you can even become anemic from losing the blood, uh, you know, and, the, and so you're becoming nutritionally deficient because it's passing so quick and now you're bleeding. Now you have, uh, you become anemic as well. And, um, you know, I just talked about a testimonial there from uh, that I got from a medical doctor um, who had ulcerative colitis. And he he said in his testimonial, which you can find under my in my website under uh, colon related testimonials, a couple of pages down um, where he said that, you know, he tried to treat this with uh, uh, through me his medical knowledge and going to some of the best doctors on ulcerative colitis in the country and uh, they weren't able to treat it and as he says in my testimonial that I stopped the loose stools in a matter of days and within uh, six weeks he, the bleeding had stopped and uh, all the pain had resolved. Um, now this took some very advanced herbal uh, work and as he mentions in the testimonials I gave him three uh, different custom formulas, one to take when he had bleeding and diarrhea. And then once the diarrhea stopped, I had to change to another formula. And then once the bleeding stopped, he had to change to the third formula. And in many of these clients, they go up and down. I mean, they, they're, they're getting better and then they get a little worse. They get a little better and they get a little worse. Then when they get better, they forget everything I tell them and they go out and eat the wrong foods and it comes back again and they have to go back to the diet and often back to the herbs. It's very easy to have this reoccurrence. Now, as per Ayurveda, this is a uh, pitta condition, inflammatory condition, particularly when there's bleeding, and particularly it's vata pushing pitta or vata pushing kapha in some cases. Um, so, you know, pitta is a, is a panchaka pitta, sure, is the home of pitta, the, the stomach acids, the digestion. And, and when this, uh, we go through the stages of of, of uh, pathology in the um, uh, increase in pitta then we see that the pitta moves from this uh, stomach acid area we call panchaka pitta and spreads prasara prakopa and then it spreads to the tissue in the body and the and your intestinal lining is made of this uh, rasa or rasa datsu or tissue and that's the part that's becoming inflamed. So it's progressing. Usually a lot of these cases, they start with um, acid reflux for many years. And it, the person is often a pitta prakriti, if you're familiar with Ayurveda, so they're warm and hot and susceptible to uh, loose stools in the first place and uh, high stomach acids. And that's only one category of person who gets it. That's the pitta prakriti type. And when they, when it's becoming ulcerated and it's bleeding, you know, then it's 
it's uh, even more of a pitta condition. But there's still vata pushing it. There's a panavayu. That's the down move movement of uh, vata. So, you know, it's vata pushing too much and, and creating the pitta or the inflammation. Just like we would have in the mountains, you know, the fire doesn't start unless there's the wind and things are dry. So a lot of times there's this dryness that's involved too, that's creating this environment for the tissue to be damaged. So that's the first category is a person who has easy bleeding, has a history of loose stool. This is the pitta category. So you really need to categorize yourself or your patient first because your old treatment is still going to be based on their, uh, you know, their prakriti and their vikriti, their body type and their imbalance. So, um, and we're talking about the most common type of prakriti pitta person who's warm and hot, has a strong stomach acids and easy to get loose stools anyway. So they're already susceptible for it. Um, that's the first category. The second category, most common is vata. Uh, vata is a more cold, light, dry qualities of a person and rough. So this, the tissue or the rasadatsu becomes dry, depleted, rough from dehydration and then it starts to become inflamed just like your foot you know your foot can get all your heel of your foot can get kind of dry and cr and then a bit cracking and then eventually that can lead to bleeding so that's how the dryness progresses by damaging the tissue or and then it, it then it, it becomes inflamed but it started with the dry just like your foot you know, it can have a dry, 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 then crack and then bleeding. And now it's, you know, progress. Once there's the bleeding and there's that pain, you know, then we know there's vata and pitta involved. It's ultimately a pitta condition, but, you know, it's what's behind it. What aggravated the pitta? Was it a pitta prakriti? The person was already warm and hot and a little acidic by nature? Or did the vata, the, the dry, rough, light qualities of vata, damage the tissue first and then lead to the inflammation. So that's the second type because ultimately this condition is mostly a vata pushing pitta condition. So you're often treating uh, either just pitta in the first case or you're treating vata and pitta in the, in the second case. So all the herbs and to some degree the diet is different. The third case type is the least uh, common and that's more of the uh, kapha condition uh and there's a lot of more mucus and and and, and phlegm mucus in the stool um uh, and other uh and there's a person has excess weight there's often swelling involved um and uh, some constipation but particularly uh, let me jump back to the vata type the vata type for sure had constipation that was part of the pathology part of the cause was those dry hard stools you know, in the lack of regular bowel movements that led to the condition. Other things that can lead to these inflammatory uh, colon conditions is even parasites. So we're uh, damage the, um, uh, the, the mucosa lining of the uh, colon, and then, you know, it becomes inflamed. So that's, the, we can say the fourth cause. We're mostly going to focus on the first cause, you know, pitta alone, because this is the most typical. It's either pitta vata type or vata pitta type, you know, are the most common uh, categories to get this. Vatas tend to have more gas and bloating. Uh, well, you know, pitta types have more nausea and, and, and diarrhea and some burning in the anal canal. There's some more of a burning sensation. Whenever there's burning, there's pitta. Whenever there's pain, there's vata. So that's important to remember. Um, now, the diet for all these cases is very similar because it's an inflammatory condition. Um, so uh, you, you want to reduce down pitta aggravating foods and to some degree vata aggra aggravating foods. So um, let's start with the, the main foods that we need to uh, look at. So when you have you have loose stools, whether it's ulcerative or just inflamed, or you're just having five, six loose bowel movements every day, there's certain things that you know we can change with our diet that can make quite a big difference. 
um, even though, like I said, in the advanced stages, it's very hard to treat without the herbs. Even with the herbs, it takes some experience. It took me many years of studying with an Ayurvedic doctor and purchasing many herbs I never had before and getting used to these herbs and, and then getting used to the different types of uh, IBS to, to get good at this condition. Um, and I would say that's only been in the last, you know, three or four years that I've been successful. IBS is much easier to treat than ulcerative colitis, and it's important to understand the differences in the diet and the treatment. So, uh, but foods, let's start with the diet because there's some things right across the board that we don't want. One, no pungent vegetables or spices, pungent hot, no cayenne pepper, no chili pepper. And this is often a cause. We get a lot of um, Indian and Hispanic uh, uh, people who are having a lot of spicy, hot uh, chili peppers for many years. And this can be a major cause of ulceration in the uh, colon and inflammation. So in, in all these cases, even if you're just having five or six loose stools and a cup, a little pain, you can just kiss chili pepper, cayenne pepper out, even hot. And once you get up to uh ibs uh you have to be real careful you can use some cumin little coriander very little ginger to, particularly if it's pitta based but once you get to uh ulcerative colitis you can't use any ginger at all not even cumin um it's a completely different uh treatment but the the the, the, the first approach is get these you know aggravating foods out of the diet and hot spices, chili pepper, mustard, black pepper, cayenne pepper, even salt, you know, is inflaming this condition. Now, you don't want to go too extreme. If you're just having loose stools, you know, you don't need to cut it all out. You just need to probably reduce it down. But I would say the chili pepper's got to go for all cases. Um, second is we want to get rid of or stop all nightshades. These are all inflammatory. We know that you know anybody who's helped people with arthritis and joint pain you know that these um, nightshades are inflammatory and they bring more uh, muscle pain joint pain but they also bring more inflammation in the colon the gi tract um, and create more acidity a lot of times the person will have acidity and ulcerative colitis together or acidity and heartburn GERD plus IBS they often come together and you really need to treat them both um, but you want to take out all these nightshades what are the nightshades feel free to text me if you can think of them faster than I tell you um, that is tomatoes no tomato sauce it's out this is very important to remove tomatoes and eggplant these are very acidic foods that's right keep going and uh, eggplant, bell pepper, um, and even white potatoes. Once you get up to like uh, ulcerative colitis, you don't even want white potatoes anymore. Uh, and even paprika is a nightshade. And many people don't know, even who practice Ayurveda, that ashwagandha is also a nightshade and needs to be uh, uh, not used in this condition. And it has to be used carefully in many serious intestinal inflammatory conditions so getting rid of all these we could call acidic foods next we want to remove all sour sour foods no citrus no lemon no vinegar uh you know these are all sour they're creating more stomach acids more heat you know citrus is creating heat um, and we'll talk about what you should be doing instead and in this case sweet fruits no no lemon no lime no citrus and no uh, fermented foods. Oh, fer a lot of people are even getting this from too much fermented foods, too much pickles, pickle garlic, pickled, you know, fruit. It's pickles with chili pepper. This will create it over time. I've had many uh, Indian uh, clients who, you know, they love their uh, pickles. And, uh, you know, 10, 20 years, 30 years, you're having a hot, spicy pickles, but eventually this can damage the lining uh, mucosa lining of the colon and start to have inflammation and pain. And ultimately, if you keep going and keep just throwing in the pickles and the chili pepper, you know, and then ulceration. Um, in fact, I think the uh, one testimonial I have of ulcerative colitis, one of them, he was a Pakistani and he loved his spicy chili food. 
Now, he didn't get the ulcerative colitis until later in life. So, you know, it took 30, 40 years of having chili pepper and cayenne pepper and uh, pickles to damage his colon. But once he's had that damage, he can never really go back. You'll be susceptible to it uh, for um, probably the rest of your life. Once you've had that damage and recovered, it's a very important to stay away from the sour foods. And we'll talk about what foods to have in a minute, but I'll give you one clue. It should be sweet, sweet foods like coconut water, sweet uh, uh, fruits like uh, pears. It's sweet. You want the sweet taste, no sour taste. Even kiwi can be too sour. Even uh, uh, pineapple can be too sour. Green grapes can be too sour, but red grapes can be fine if it's not have the seed. So uh, no hot spices, no uh, nightshades, no sour foods, particularly citrus. And once again, I'll say no fermented foods. This is even a cause. I've seen people having a lot of fermented foods and doing kombucha, kombucha all day long for years and start to have, you know, loose stools and diarrhea uh, from this. It's just too much. I mean, these are uh, uh, fermented foods you should only have in small quantities with food and not be consuming them in large quantities. And they are heating again by nature. Even honey at the advanced stage can really upset uh, ulcerative colitis and even irritable bowel. It just depends on the degree of the person. Some people have a little pain. Uh, some people have pain all day. Some people have th two or three loose bowel movements a day. Some people have, you know, five or six loose bowel movements a day with no bleeding. Other people have three or four loose bowel movements a day with bleeding. Some people have a little bleeding. Some people have a lot of bleeding. So, you know, you really have to gauge the diet and the treatment at where the person is because you don't want to be too restrictive to, with the diet. You never want to just be radical and say, okay, no tomato, uh, no no nightshades, no sour foods. No, you don't jump to that conclusion. I mean, that's the direction you're going, but it depends on the severity of the case. And of course, if you have a kapha, uh, a, a vikrti or a prakriti where the person's overweight and heavy, you know, then you're going to get to get away with having more of these little sour uh, foods, a little bit of sour and uh, maybe even uh, like some lemon or some lime. You may be able to get away with lime. It's not as sour as uh, lemon. So uh, you never want to do more than necessary. I think this is very important. I teach this to my students. You don't want to over over limit the diet. You want to just go right up to the edge. Like so if somebody you know, they have poor, weak digestion, which is the cause of IBS is poor digestion, by the way. I mean, that's what's causing it. So, you know, with IBS compared to ulcerative colitis, you can give a little bit of cumin, ginger, coriander tea and re rejuvenate the digestion and the, the IBS gets better. But with ulcerative colitis, you can't give any even cumin, even uh, even a little ginger will make it worse. Well, you could give fennel, you know, fennel um, is very soothing. You can have fennel tea after meals, even if there's ulceration. So, you know, if you have ulcerative colitis, you maybe just fennel tea is the safest. But if you have just IBS, maybe fennel, cumin, coriander. And, you know, if you just have loose stools, you could be a little bit more lax, put more cumin in it. Particularly if the agni's low, like in the kapha case where there's no, we have manda agni, where there's no a strong digestive fire, there's no appetite, there's no hunger, they're overweight, there's probably more fat on the body. And you can probably even give some ginger, some cumin, you know, just to the degree to get that digestive fire going again, because that's part of their cause is this manda agni. But the most common is the trikshna agni, where it's too strong. These people are very hungry, they have acidity. Uh, that's the pitta type. So that's the most common and we want to use more gentle spices because we don't want to over stimulate the digestion. So let's keep going with the diet. The other category of foods that need to be eliminated, particularly when there's a lot of gas and bloating for the vata type of person who's cold and light and dry. And now they're getting this um, diarrhea for the first time in their life. Maybe that a history of constipation. And now they're getting these first they get alternating stools. Now they got diarrhea and sometimes blocked up, you know, then you want to this is a second category where there's zvat, that there's dryness involved and the person tends to be cold, not warm. But now they're getting diarrhea, loose stools for the first time in their life and pain. Um, then you want to take out all cabbage family, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, kale. 
and even for ulcerative colitis, you've got to take it out too. These are colon irritants, you know, that's why people are doing kale all the time, end up with gas and bloating. Now I have seen many cases of people who were um, a vegan, or we could just say not doing any dairy in any form and, um, and then doing a lot of raw vegetables, raw vegetables make this condition worse. And then they start even at a young age in their twenties, start to have, you know, loose stools, pain, and even uh, some bleeding. And too much raw vegetables are too rough. So you can't have, there's no raw vegetables in this diet. Once you get up to the bleeding stage or your diarrhea stage, the food has to be cooked and very bland in taste to not aggravate the condition. So raw vegetables are out um, and the cabbage, cauliflower, kale is out. Um, and what's remaining, that's a good point, good question, is a, a gourd family, squash, zucchini, pumpkin, these are soft and non-inflammatory and balancing both vata and pitta. And also, uh, depending on the uh, vikriti of the person or their imbalance, whether they're hot or warm or dry or, you know, how much mucosa is there. Uh, you know, if the mouth is really dry, then we know that the, the GI tract is very dry. If the gums are got sores and the gums, mouth sores and the gums are red and inflamed, particularly even just around the teeth are just tender, then you know it's a pitta type. There's more pain and inflammation. If there's a lot of mucus and phlegm, this is more of a kapha type. So we can see, in a sense, the GI tract from the mouth, even though we're, of course, looking at the, you know, we're talking about the pain is in the other end of the GI tract, uh, but at the same time, we can get indications by looking in the mouth and seeing if it's dry or hot. A lot of times, the tongue will be just perfectly pink and red and no mucus on it at all. That's, that's a sign, particularly on the edges of the tongue, the tip of the tongue, it's red, there's red patches. These are typical signs of this ulceration, excess pitta, or about the pushing pitta in the colon. Um, so if there's mucus, it's a little different, then you can use a little bit warmer uh, foods. So, um, and then you could use some, uh, you, you would want to avoid in most cases, all hot foods like garlic is out. I mean, many people are doing garlic pickles and all these things, and this is making it worse. Um, and like I said, I got some uh, many cases of uh, vegans or people not having any dairy at all. And, and by not having any dairy, you know, we're getting, uh, then you can have too much stomach acids. And, um, and, and then you have no dairies. The dairy is creating the mucosa, the protection, you know, lining the stomach uh, mucosa. And, and yogurt, of course, has healthy bacteria. Too much yogurt, of course, creates too much mucus and phlegm. But if you're dry and you don't have any mucosa and phlegm and you're uh, vata, you know, some yogurt can help, um, but butter is really indicated in, all, in these both vata and pitta cases. If you're dry or inflamed or hot, um, butter is very soothing. And in fact, we have some uh, uh, products, some ghees that I'll show you later that called soothing ghee. And uh, this can be used to help to soothe the intestinal lining. And it's basically licorice in ghee. And it just coats the whole inside of the GI tract. So ghee is generally given for these, and butter at least for the many of these uh, ulceration and irritable bowel conditions. That's right. And so people who leave it out and are eating a lot of raw vegetables and hot spicy foods and fermented foods over time can actually damage the, the and reduce down the uh, mucosa in the stomach and damage the intestinal villi. And then there's uh, uh, dryness and roughness in the colon because raw foods, raw vegetables are rough. So all foods should be very bland, bland and soft, like squash, zucchini, and a another and and nothing hard. This is very important. Nothing hard. Like so, we give no. We don't even use brown rice. Once you have diarrhea, loose stools, irritable bowel, there's no more brown rice. That's got even the husk can be irritating. Um, it, you know, use white rice and soupy and soft uh, white rice. And also many uh, seeds can bother you. Like even the, 
once it's bad, depending on the degree, but uh, even the little seeds on strawberries, the little seeds on the outside of strawberries, these can even damage the colon once you're having bleeding. So you have to be very careful. Like I found uh, the uh, uh, food, sweet, food, coconut, coconut waters, uh, uh, and pear, pear juice, butter. You can see how these are very soothing. Just imagine, say you had you, you you fell on your bike on the road and you had a big red gash. It's not bleeding, but it's all red, right? It's exposed. It's red. It's a rash and it's sensitive. It could be like we're going to use this as an example, so you can kind of visualize a, a big, big, big you know a carpet burn, like a carpet burn, or just you know a big scrape. It's not a cut, but just it's raw. It's raw skin there because you had like a big carpet burn. Now, if you put vinegar on it, it hurts. If you put lemon on it, it hurts. If you put chili pepper on it, it hurts. If you put tomato sauce on it, it hurts. If you get butter on it, it feels good. Simple. <laughs> and if you drink, put coconut water on it, it feels good. You put pear juice on it, it feels good. That's the way you have to think. <laughs> if you've got raw tissue inside of your colon and your pickles, uh, are making it worse and tomatoes and sour things are all just aggravating it. So it just keeps getting flared up and it can never heal. Um, so, you know, uh, you have to first get this inflammation down. So, um, like I said, I'll show you this, um, healing ghee in a minute. And, um, and, and that's one thing that we use to help soothe the intestinal lining. And we have, um, so the first stage is to get down this inflammation and change the diet. Let me give you a few more dietary guidelines here. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a limited diet to, if you got the ulcerative colitis. Let me tell you, you're having a lot of squash, white rice. Oh, you can't have any beans. Uh, beans also are very rough and uh, harmful. Now, mung dal, yellow mung, not the green mung with the hus. Yellow mung for IBS can work, but not even for ulcerative colitis. Uh, so you're often given a person with ulcerative colitis a non-nutritionally sound diet because you're too limited. You're giving them white rice and squash and, you know, and, and mushy soft food. Um, and it's just not much protein there. Um, and uh, it's it, it's somewhat limited nutritionally. But, but the idea is to allow the space for the, the you know, the colon to heal. And it's never going to heal and as long as you're having the spicy foods, the sour foods and, and such. So, and you don't want cold food either, you know, cold drinks, cold water also are not good. So uh, it's, it's a limited diet and really I have to customize it to each person based on their body type, Procrity, Vicarity, and the severity of the case and whether there's bleeding or no bleeding. Another good uh, fruit that has helped is pomegranate. A pomegranate the skin is actually in my IBS formula, it's pomegranate skin. And you can just get it. If you have loose stools, you can get a pomegranate with the skin and just grate it and make some tea. And this will help with diarrhea. So even a little pomegranate juice is astringent. You want astringent things that help to the tissue to tighten up and to heal and demulcent herbs, you know, like uh, comfrey, licorice that help to soothe the intestinal lining and help it to heal. You know, we use comfrey for broken bones and skin and scars, comfrey root. Um, but, you know, comfrey with uh, uh, other herbs are often combined like uh, licorice, slippery elm, marshmallow root, you know, and these create this, you know, mucosa lining and almost a, like, a, like a prebiotic space for the healthy bacteria to live. And, you know, we can see that there's similarities between a leaky gut and this ulcerative colitis. The leaky gut's more in the small intestines where, you know, but it's similar where you're not having the intestinal mucosa and the intestinal villi are have been inflamed and damaged. And then everything you eat is bothering you. But the treatment is somewhat similar where, you know, butter, demulcent herbs, non, uh, not sour, not hot not acidic foods, sweet, cooling foods are taken and um, allowing the mucosa to uh, reform again. And we have some herbs. So there's a few stage. 
um, if you have bleeding, you know, there's loose stools um, and, and then there's pain and then there's bleeding. So first we need to stop the loose stools as quick as possible um, and, uh, you know, putting them on the right diet, having the, the rice, the, the squash, the you know, maybe mung dal if the, there's no bleeding, uh, like a kitchari, very mild spices and butter should always the butter is very helpful you see in this case better than the yogurt which is fermented have to be more careful with anything fermented um and then that will kind of stabilize it and create a space where they have less pain um, and that's all you can really do with the diet is just kind of like stabilize it unfortunately it doesn't really heal it very quickly from what i found and this diet is a nutritionally not a sound diet so uh you, they can't stay on it very long. You have to treat it in the space that you've created um, by with a dot non-inflammatory, mushy, soft, warm, not as hot, not sour, not pungent, not acidic foods. So now you have them in that space. And now the first step is to stop the, uh, the, the loose stools and the diarrhea. Fortunately, we have uh, herbs that work very well for this in Ayurveda. Um, and here we have one formula here. We just call it, you know, diarrhea formula. And the main herb is bilva. Bilva is, you know, we use it for excess menstrual bleeding for women too. It stops bleeding and, and katuj is for loose stools. And dadimastaka churna, this is an Ayurvedic formula that's used for IBS. And, and a kamaduda is reducing down pitta. This is an uh, uh, Lajalut's uh, uh, not a very well-known herb. And Arjuna, uh, but uh, I use it particularly in ulcerative colitis. It's a real demulcent. You get this Lajalut and put it in your mouth, and your whole mouth is all sticky and slimy. So it's creating that coating. And Arjuna is helping to heal the tissue. I remember speaking to my teacher, why are you using Arjuna? He says that's the help to heal the tissue. And there's a shank basma. This is also bringing down pitta, and uh, it's a shell from the shank shell, and it's a, like a powder. It's good for acidity and heartburn. So this is very effective formula for uh, uh, stopping this loose stools uh, very quickly. Uh, unfortunately, these herbs are very uh, hard to find. Uh, here's here's the laja loot here. A very amazing herb. Like I said, you put a little in your mouth and it's all slimy and coats the inside of the intestinal lining. And when I have serious cases, I have all these herbs in single form because I make these formulas and then I can I can make these custom formulas. Uh, here's one here. Uh, this is now not as severe. We call it IBS formula, but it's uh, for when there's kind of more loose stools and diarrhea, it's kind of back and forth. Then we use, and, and particularly if they're diagnosed with uh, IBSC, it's a, a bit getting to the root causes of the malabsorption, excessive bowel movements. And uh, that does have the pomegranate. You can see right there, pomegranate skin. It just says pomegranate, but it's actually got pomegranate skin. It's even got a little cane sugar. So, you know, that's the interesting thing. See, the cane sugar is very soothing, and it's using a type of bamboo that's right again it's a soothing it's a, from bamboo it's a coating the intestinal lining so this one is uh, better if there's like a uh, weak digestion uh, a lot of gas and bloating constipation loose stools and we often give them this one but if there's more serious diarrhea and they're having more than three loose movements a day particularly seven or eight or nine then we got to give them the diarrhea formula so somebody like this they may start off with a diarrhea formula but it's so effective that three or four days, the diarrhea can be gone. So then they have to move to the next formula, which is uh, the next progression, so to speak, um, which is uh, got a little bit more. See, there's a little cumin in there. It's a little bit more helping the digestion, just not stopping the diarrhea. And then if they're making uh, a, a progress there, then we'd move them to the next one. This is uh, pitta, just for pitta. See, it says for intestinal inflammation or loose stools. Particularly if you're in that first category where you don't really have IBS, you just got loose stools. You got bumamalaki, um, amla, and there's kumari, which is aloe, and there's the um, katuj. Katuj is for loose stools and a little fennel and a little trivet. So 
you know, it, it's got a little bit, there's like, uh, there's no diarrhea here. You could be even, you know, just loose stools. And, and this one is it. So, you know, the, as the person progresses, you have to change the formula as you go along. You can read from a testimonial from the MD who had ulcerative colitis, uh, speaking about before this uh, recording. And he says very clearly in his long testimonial that I gave him three formulas on the first appointment. And that's because once the diarrhea stopped, he had to move to the next formula. And then once the bleeding stopped, um, then he had to move to the next formula. And we have special herbs just for bleeding too, named Nakashar, which is, you know, if you had any of these conditions um, and you had bleeding, I would add some Nagashar to it and maybe even more uh, Katuj or Bilva. So it's quite sophisticated herbalism to deal with ulcerative colitis. Um, now, I've been successful with IBS with just this one right off the shelf. But, you know, when the person comes in, sometimes I have to modify it and custom the, customize, the, customize it for them. If there's a lot of heat and they're very hot, then I would add Shatavari to it. I could dump this out and add two or three ounces of Shatavari and give it right back to them. If they're more Vata, then see, I may dump it out and add Dashamula to it, put it in a six ounce, and then give it back to them because I want to balance the Vata with the Dashamu, and I want to balance the Pitta with the Shatavari, particularly if there's a lot of heat involved. The, pitta, the Shatavari will help with the heat. And Shatavari is also demulcent, coating the entire intestinal lining, very sweet, very soothing. Um, and here I have a tea that I made for both leaky gut and um, ulcerative conditions. And we call it soothing gut tea using Western herbs. And this is uh, coating the intestinal lining, good for ulcers. And it's also a prebiotic to help the intestinal bacteria to repopulate. And yeah, we see marshmallow roots, slippery elm, comfrey, and licorice, all demulcent herbs. And that feels very good. Often we start using that in the beginning and start taking the probiotics because as you may know, one of the causes of course is excess use of antibiotics destroying your intestinal uh, bacteria. And then the villi in the small intestine become inflamed and you know, and, and in the colon you lose your healthy bacteria and these are our protectors. So um, sometimes just taking antibiotics in this condition doesn't work. But so you take the soothing gut tea and, and more uh, mucus creating uh, foods like butter to start lining the intestinal lining and protecting it. You have to remember all tissue in our body is surrounded by the membrane, like just like a cell has a cell membrane. It's made of fat. Our body is skin is, you know, type of fat tissue protecting us. So our intestinal lining is all still protected to some degree by fat tissue. So if you're on an extremely low fat diet, you're more susceptible to this condition. Um, if you can tell if you're not having enough fat in the diet by just looking at the, your skin. And if it's very, very thin, like paper thin, you're not having enough fat in the diet or you're not able to digest the fat because maybe liver problems or gallbladder problems, which would mean you have to fix that issue as well because you need this fat to coat the intestinal lining but this tea works quite well we start giving out this tea in most cases in the beginning and with the probiotics to start repopulating um, the digestive system and if uh digestion is weak and they have no appetite there's this one type of case with a strong appetite in acidity and the other case it has no appetite it's more kappa vicar tea we give a tea like this a real gentle digestive tea it says right on there gentle digestive tea before meals reduces appetite but you can see it's just got fennel coriander cumin little cinnamon cardamom and that may be too strong for somebody with ulcerative colitis with ulcerative colitis we just give them only fennel tea <laughs> you know got to be really careful with ulcerative colitis they're really tiptoeing around like i said once it's ulcerated you know it's very very tricky i took many years to get that uh, down and the, the diet's very detailed. I mean, like I said, no strawberries because the seeds, anything with a seed, no husk, no, you know, anything can aggravate and make the bleeding worse. And we first have to, like we said, when we have like a raw tissue on our body or inside of our colon, the first thing we have to do is bring down the inflammation and allow it to start to heal. And then during that period, we can heal. And that's why there's comfrey root in here too because comfrey root you know helps heal 
tissue. So comfrey root, and it's a demulcent, so it's helping to heal the tissue. Just like in the um, IBS formula, we're using Arjuna to help heal the tissue. So this formula, you know, is a really quite uh, uh, special formula in that it's improving the digestion, reducing the loose stools, and start to allow the tissue to heal. Uh, you know, and this is called Dadimastika Cherna. That's the name of it. I mean, they had inflammatory colon conditions thousands of years ago. And as per the Ayurvedic text, there are ancient formulas to treat it. And one of them is called Dadimastika Cherna. And this formula is basically Dadimastika Cherna. The diarrhea formula has got Dadimastika Cherna in it, plus extra bilva, extra katuj, extra astringent herbs to reduce the... Uh, uh, the uh bleeding and the loose stools and like i said if you have a lot of loose stools then you got to add other herbs like nagashar uh nakashar um so and here's another one we often use uh maybe after meals because a lot of those colon ones we're taking at night before bed this is one we often use if there's particularly stomach ulceration pain soothing intestines and you know abdominal pain formula but it can be used in this ibs irritable bowel guduchi it's an anti-inflammatory immune modulator and there's that shank basma again which is you know putting down the stomach acids and it's very soothing sometimes we have to give that after every meal um and then if it's not you can't use aloe vera if there's ulceration but um at the second stage once you've got it stable you haven't had any diarrhea no bleeding for a few weeks then you can start to use some aloe inner leaf. You can't use the whole leaf. That will tear up your colon again um, because the leaf, the skin is uh, the irritant. Just like you can't have almond skins, but you can have almond powder. Um, so this is aloe vera inner leaf, small doses, even taken with um, uh, the tea, like this healing gut tea. This will start to allow that aloe to come down into the GI tract, get into the system and allow the tissue to heal. But first you got to stabilize it. So there's no pain, there's no diarrhea. And then you start to work on the healing um, aspect of it. And, and that can go on for a time, you know, it can go on for weeks. Uh, and meanwhile, the person's following this very strict and somewhat limited diet with sweet fruit, squash, zucchini, pumpkin, you know, a sweet potato, a butter, bland spices, only fennel and coriander, and a lot of white rice, white cakey rice. If you're having really loose stools, you need to make a white cakey rice. <laughs> so it's dry and it's white, and that really helps. And you have to be a, a, a careful with skins of a lot of things, like all the nuts, all the nuts, you know, nuts are too hard, but you can get almond powder works quite well. In fact, I found you can do almond powder like pancakes even with ulcerative colitis, and then, you know, the person's getting some protein uh, from that. Um, and if it's only IBS, then, you know, a lot of times we can get away with mung dal or kitchri, white rice with yellow split mung dal uh, with very mild spices and a lot of ghee, a lot of butter. And it's very soothing, very comforting, easy to digest. So you're just trying to keep the person, you know, alive by eating the the foods the you know, not too limited, but just enough to keep the condition at bay. So there's no pain, no bleeding. And then you're using the herbs to help to keep the uh, bleeding and the diarrhea at bay with these astringent, cooling, sweet herbs. Uh, and then um, and then then you're coming in and trying to heal it slowly with the Arjuna, the aloe, and that can take a little while to heal it. And then you back back out of it again by adding the foods back in slowly after about a month of treatment, depending on the severity. The one doctor who gave me the testimonial, he said it took eight weeks, but he had the condition for a long time and there was a lot of bleeding involved and he couldn't stop it. And um, he, he talks about the medications that he was prescribed like steroids and things. Um, and he was didn't want to take these and they weren't that effective. Um, and every time he got off of the medication, this condition came back. And that's why he came to see me, as he said, very reluctantly. But um, we, so I had a lot of pressure on me there. But by that point, I'd had some experience with ulcerative colitis and had a few cases. So uh, I think I did quite well. He gave me a very nice testimonial 
Um, so that's the sum of it. Um, you know, if you just have the loose stools, this is probably enough information for you to, you know, manage it. Um, if you have IBS, you probably could start the diet and then maybe contact me and I could help you go from there for the healing. Some people have been discovered this, you know, anti-inflammatory diet on their own and they could get stuck in the limbo where one or two years they're just eating soft, mushy foods. But as soon as they get off of it, you know, the problem comes back. So that's what I've heard. And that's why you have to interject right there in that time frame where you're on the soft, wishy, warm, sweet, non-aggravated, non-inflammatory, non-acidic, non-sour diet um, and, and treat it quickly with the herbs so you don't have to stay on this diet forever. Um, you get stuck. We see a lot of people do this with uh, candida as well. They get candida, so they cut out all fruit, all sugar, all grains. And, you know, a year later, now they're 100 pounds and they still got the candida. They get stuck in the diet because they don't do the treatment at that point. The, the diet isn't going to resolve it, but, you know, you you don't want to, uh, uh, you know, you have to treat it in that sweet spot. You don't want to stay on this highly restrictive diet for more than a month or so. You have to treat it quickly. Um, and that's a problem that people have on their own. And yeah, somebody's asking about, you know, fish and other animal protein, you know, of, uh, uh, saltwater fish is not good. It's too salty in the, most of these conditions and, uh, tr freshwater fish, trout, um, you know, sea bass, these tend to be safer. Um, and yeah, a lot of people do better on some dark chicken meat, well cooked bone broth is very good you know, for healing and soothing the gut. And people have discovered that bone broth and a bland diet, and they can kind of get it under control. But that's the time you need the herbalist to come in there and help you heal it. Otherwise, you're just going to be eating bland food and bone broth for the rest of your life. Um, and uh, but, you know, you have to be even careful with the meat. But, uh, you know, they do better than beans. You can't be doing beans when you have ulcerative colitis or uh, IBS. It's just too rough, as they say in Ayurveda, the beans. Um, so, you know, some chicken soup, uh, but no salty fish uh, at all. Some, like I said, fresh water fish and uh, dark chicken meat, not the white chicken. The white is too dry. And generally, it should be no big pieces of meat, but cut very small very fine. So this person could be doing white rice, some chicken soup and some squash and zucchini and having sweet fruits and, you know, and then he got it under control. A lot of times I try to get the person to get it under, get, do the diet first. And then, then, you know, they, you can then call me and we can do the appointment. So then I can come in at a stage where you've already made some progress with the diet. Okay. It's so once again, um, it's a serious condition the, and it can progress. So if you already have loose stools, you know, eight loose stools a day and you remember, well, two years ago, you only had two loose stools. Well, you know, next you could it could progress if you don't make changes to your diet and treat it in the early stage, you know, just a little loose stools in the uh, colon. Then, you know, you can treat it with changing your diet. But once you have the ulceration, you have a lot of pain, you have all, you know, then it's more difficult to do without the herbs. The herbs are just making the results quick instead of waiting weeks for the diarrhea to stop you can do it in days instead of the bleeding stopping slowly you know you can stop it in again in days so you know and you need to, it's a quick action here so uh, you can heal so you're stopping the diarrhea you're stopping the bleeding then you're healing the gut and that you have to make sure you do it long enough some of my clients i would have to say many half of them <laughs> didn't do the healing part long enough. They got too confident, no more bleeding, no more diarrhea, no more pain. They relaxed, went out and had some salsa and bam, you know, <laughs> they were bleeding and they couldn't get rid of it. Even they went back to the diet. So they get the panicky calls. And uh, generally I know if they're my old patient, I can pull out their file and look at their custom formula. All cases in ulcerative colitis, the formulas have to be customed customized and changed on a regular basis. Like when they have the follow-up appointment, then I'm looking at what I gave them before, but maybe there's no bleeding now, there's no pain, but you know, they still feel they can't eat anything. It hasn't healed yet. So the, you know, now I can put more healing herbs in there and less 
herbs, astringent herbs to stop the bleeding because the bleeding has settled down. At least the wound is closed. It's not bleeding, but it's still uh, uh, raw and sensitive. And the mucosa hasn't restored itself yet. Uh, uh, like, but like I said, many people got confident too early, relaxed too early, didn't do their follow-up so I could uh, see how they're doing and went out and had some hot spicy food and then they call me back panicking. But the second time, or they generally take it much more seriously and they just stay on the diet, stay on the herbs and move to the next herbs. I'm moving them along with my herbs. Like I said, stopping the diarrhea first, stopping the bleeding next. Then I focus on healing herbs and then I, then I, go, then I start expanding the diet back out carefully and tell them what foods you could never have in your life and you probably will never have chili pepper and cayenne pepper hot pickles and too much cabbage and broccoli and raw foods probably for the rest of your life because these will all aggravate the colon particularly raw kale is a common cause of inflammatory colon conditions so i hope that helped you folks i know it's a kind of an advanced subject but i hope it gives you hope that it's treatable and as you can see from my website and i've posted here in this blog on this uh, live webinar, uh, many testimonials that I've had, both uh, uh, many for diarrhea, quite a few for IBS, and uh, recently in the fa last few years, some good testimonials from medical, I mean, uh, from uh, for ulcerative colitis, and one from a medical doctor who gave it like a page long testimonial, which is really explaining it quite well, my whole process and how sophisticated it is. It's really quite sophisticated. I went to India many times and studied with a doctor days and days and days asking questions until I got it down. And then I had to get order and find herbs I'd never heard of and get used to these herbs before I became good at treating it. So if you have ulcerative colitis, I wouldn't recommend you do it on your own. Or if you have bleeding, then you really need professional Ayurvedic uh, treatment. And even Ayurvedic herbalists in India, you have to be quite good to be able to treat this condition. Okay. And one point I wanted to make, you know, it is a digestive problem. It's coming from, uh, you know, poor digestion. And what is the poor digestion coming from? You know, irregular eating, snacking, and um, eating these uh, herbs. I mean, this the wrong foods uh, for extended period of time. So it, it, it starts with poor digestion, particularly irritable bowel. Irritable bowel, we have to kind of revive the digestion plus you know, uh, heal and lessen the inflammation in the colon simultaneously. So it's a little tricky uh, when the person has no appetite, they're not hungry, and then they have inflammation in the colon at the same time. You have to balance that out, and that does take a little finesse, which is why almost nine out of ten cases, I have to make the herbs by scratch for every inflammatory colon condition. And then when they come back, completely different new custom formula as they progress. So once again, uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. At least if you felt this was a little too advanced for you, then uh, at least know there is hope for treatment. And this uh, even ex advanced stages of ulcerative colitis are treatable. Please contact me if you need more assistance with your health. I appreciate that. Thank you.